Hi there, welcome back. Um, I just wanted to show you a little video of um, sort of a being out in the woodland, what I um, collected, what sort of images I create when I'm thinking about um, making a multiple exposure. If I go out with that in mind, I tend to shoot with that in mind. Um, it's why I find sometimes it's really nice to go out and have absolutely no idea what you're shooting for and then you don't really think about what you're taking, you just react. And then sometimes it's really nice to know what you are wanting to create when you've come back into, um, come back to the computer with the pictures. And then it just gives you a little bit more direction. I say that, um, but I'm sitting here and you're seeing the screen with 427 images I took uh, when I went to the woods with a clear idea of what I was going to create. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily add up. What I just wanted to do was just show you, this is, I went to this wood with uh, the idea in mind of making some ICM multiple exposures. And you can see there is such a massive variation in types of images. I'll just run you through very quickly the types I've got. So <clears throat> I've got here uh, pictures above, non-ICM, ICM above the pic, uh, ICM above me. Um, I then look down at the ground and I've got some um i've got some uh patterns and i've got some textures um, and these are just from the uh ground and the, the leaves and it, i was deliberately looking for something very um abstract something that wasn't obvious just sort of a color and a little bit of texture then i went on to shoot uh sort of the bigger picture um the lines of the trees going through the woodlands. I was looking for different um, styles as well. So this is one where I click the button halfway through the movement. So you end up with a lot smoother movement, but then you almost end up losing the, the bottoms of the trees. That's sort of more my normal style. That's a little bit more abstract, which works quite well sometimes when you're doing multiple exposures. Um, I actually did some in-camera multiple exposure work on this occasion, which I don't do very often. But again, when I'm just out playing and experimenting and knowing that I want to collect as many different types of images for later, sort of anything goes, really. Uh, I did some very sort of my more traditional ICM work that I do. Uh, looking up into the trees, I was then looking to create some more sort of texture images from the structures above. I then started seeing the light glinting on the branches up there and you've got these lovely dark branches with the, the light coming through and just hitting it in specific places which are lovely. I then went quite abstract and then I was looking for areas that didn't have any light on it and I just was really concentrating on the lines of the branches. Something very different again, you're looking more of a texture and colour here so there's no real structure going on here but there's a real lovely lovely colour and real sort of lovely feel to these images and again so many different movements with my camera you know none of these are the same I couldn't replicate them but I could tell you which, what the movements are that I've used and then things like uh, seeing these lovely branches and then I'll take a non-ICM to match the ICM because you never know later I might want to put these two on top of each other uh, again looking at the contrast between the lines and the colours sort of really like these some you get stronger lines some less strong lines just depending on what i'm looking for sometimes i put some lines on the sort of thirds points just to make it easier later diagonal lines things coming in as you can see it's just a bit of everything i'm really running you through very quickly i mean we're at 400 400 images um collecting the blues and the golds here really um just and then some other yeah, just sort of anything goes really. It's just knowing that if you don't capture it when you're out in the woodland, you can't have it when you get back on the computer. So it really is just um, opening your eyes and just responding to what you're seeing and photographing anything that you might be able to use when you get back to your computer later. Um, you know, I've got 400 and something images of this and this is everything that I took. And I think I got down to about 200 when I'd gone my first one star through. Um, some of these are quite just black and they're not black and white exactly, but these are really just structural images that I know I could use later on. And I'm just going to try and find you the one that I took, which was just completely colour. Somewhere towards the end. Mm. Yeah, 
here, there's, you know, depending on the movement that you make with your camera during the ICM, you get some very different movement. This, for example, is all about the colour, this one for me. There's a little bit of texture going on, so it's not completely flat, but I move my camera very fast. I tend to work at the same shutter speed the whole time, but it's actually the, the hand movement or the arm movement that makes the difference. And I just wanted to show you very quickly, um, if I want to find, if I've gone through these and I want to find certain images, to um, later use for example the ones that i want to use to just show you the editing process i've starred as five star or above and i've starred as purple or green so if i then go and put all of those things then literally from the 400 it's just bringing me up the ones that i want to use so if you're working with multiple um uh, albums over on the side here so you've got images that you're using from past uh, photo shoots or things like that it's sometimes quite handy if you star them and colour them you'll find that in your whole I mean I've got like over 28,000 images in my library here if I go to all images and only select the purple and green ones I still only end up with like 30 or so I can find them really easily so sorry I dig digress a little bit I just wanted to show you these these two were this was one of my final images that I made. Now I'm going to show you the other one as well. So I'm just going to run you through um, here. So I'm just going to take these three images here. And we should take them through to Photoshop. So right click, edit in. And we're going to left click open as layers in Photoshop. So if you do open as layers in Photoshop, it will bring them all through and they can all sit on top of each other um, straight away without you having to juggle them around or look to see where they end up going. Just see if it's come through. Let's try again. It's the beauty of recording this for you. <laughs> if it goes wrong, you just have to ride it out with me. There we go. So these will just all come in. You can see them coming in here over on the right hand side. All just sitting here nicely. So what I've got here is a quite a traditional ICM, um, a structural um, image and a colour image. It's not come through properly now. Why did I lose one there? Hang on a minute. Let's just get rid of that sorry let's just do that one more time bring the three that I actually want that one that one and that one edit in open as layers in Photoshop let's see if they come through right this time we've got the color one come through <laughs> So what I'm looking to do is um, combine colour. So we've got here, we've got the colour, we've got some texture, stroke structure, and we've got quite a traditional ICM image here. Right, now we can see everything. So I'm going to use um, the colour as my base because I really love the colour. I haven't done an awful lot with any of these in um, Lightroom or Photoshop or anything. So this one's quite dark, but I don't mind that. I think it will come through okay. So I'm just going to place this one on top. And this is um, a bit of structure and texture that I'm going to add to an otherwise quite flat colour. So I'm going to highlight that one go up to the blending modes here and just work through and they all create you know this is a very abstract sort of almost painterly look this one I find is a, it's quite dark but it's quite nice this one I find very dark and a bit messy and the, the blues are a bit too blue this one's quite similar to the darkened one then you move on to the lighting section this is quite light it kind of adds a, a quite a soft feeling to them some of them really don't work at all you find the overlay and soft light will do quite a gentle effect to some of these and then the hard light some of these are very strong and then the difference in exclusion will give you some quite strange or well interesting effects so for this one I think I'm going to use let's have a look I think I'm going to use overlay but I'm not going to use it at 100% because I feel this blue is too dominating I'm now losing the gentle feeling of um, this this lovely color so I'm just going to bring it back and just bring a little bit in as I want it 
and that, that's all I want. I just wanted to add a little bit of structure, a little bit of texture, nothing too much on top of the colour. So I'm happy with that there. So now I'm going to just now click the little eye, which means now this one I can see. So I'd hidden it from view before. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to run down through these and just see which one grabs my eye. I kind of tend to work like this because I love the experimentation and finding things that might pop up. Um, these ones kind of grab my eye. I quite like this one, but I'm going to have to lighten it up a little bit. Quite like this one. It's quite creative. Lighten, you'll see you're losing the tree trunk now. So I feel that these two aren't strong enough. Overlay I quite like, but there's too much texture and detail on the tree trunk. And soft light, you lose the tree trunk. Hard light is quite, I quite like. You're getting the colours, the original colours, you're getting the textures and um, you've now got this overlay on top. But again, I'm not going to use it at full uh, opacity. So you can just see the um, the tree coming through there now. And I've got a little bit of texture still on it, but it's not, it's kind of equal at this point. I feel that that tree trunk is equal, whereas if you push it here, it now becomes far more dominant and the colours are far, pushed too far. So I'm just going to push it till I feel that it's kind of, sitting balance there you go it's almost like a charcoal gray now and this is as far as i'd go in um uh, in photoshop to be honest i don't do a massive amount of my editing in photoshop so what i do is i go to layers because if you now ex save this it will save it as a massive file which is fine if you want to come back and work on it later um what i tend to do is write down what i the process that i've done and i save it back as a jpeg because um, I just don't have enough space to be saving all these. You know, you're talking hundreds of megabytes if you save them like this. So if you go layer and flatten image, it will then make it a smaller. Then you've just got one file there. File and save. And if you've come out of Lightroom, you will go back into Lightroom and it will bring it back into Lightroom to sit with the other images in there ready to play with. She says, there you go. So here we are. You can go in here. Um, and I, when I did this originally, I, I made it a, a square crop. So if you go into the crop and select the square, those of you that have watched me before will know I do a lot with um, a double L click, which loses the background. And then as long as you've clicked the right um, crop that you want to use, you then lose all the mess around here. So it's really easy to concentrate on what you're doing. And then you can play with the crop, you know, you can play with that square crop and you can mess about with it and move it around and extend it as much as you want, as long as, you know, the, the, the image is there underneath. And it gives you a good feeling. So I'm quite, I quite like the balance of this sort of black line echoing this one here. And you might say, well, it's not sat on a third line. Well, you know, to me, if I sit it on a thirds line in this situation, I feel it's a bit too, almost feels as though it's sitting in the middle, even though it's on a thirds line. So I'm just going to push it very slightly um, because then I think it allows this little area to come in. If you press return, you then make the crop and press L once more and it will bring you back to Lightroom here. And then this is where I would then maybe play a little bit with the contrast, pushing it up down you might want to check whether you want it that blue or whether you want it a little bit warmer for example i mean it's, that's i find that you know you can push it all the way the other way i find now looking at it that that's quite blue so given that it was the autumn i'm just going to push it a little bit vibrance possibly but i find the color there quite good shadows if you felt that you didn't have enough detail here or equally if you did, had too much you might want to change that but otherwise, it's pretty, pretty good. Maybe a tiny little bit of a vignette just to knock the edges off. Um, and I am always conscious of any um, highlighted areas. So I would probably just go and put a little bit of shadows in there or just bring the blacks back. Just so I know that I haven't got any clipping of blacks or whites. So you can turn these little dots on at the top, which show you. Um, if you were to print that, then it wouldn't... Um, come out and actually looking at this now I feel this is a little bit too far sometimes you go back I feel it's just a little bit too far over that way so I'm just going to bring it back it's the beauty of Lightroom you can uh, continue to play around with it later there we go that feels a little bit better and that's my final image um, so as I mentioned before I did this one as well so um, if you put these two together you could then 
find you know have a have a bit more of a play and you start to develop a, a little set that you've made in one location um which leads on to things like a cohesive project which i do another course for looking at how you can create a number of images that sit together related to size color um contrast textures uh content but i hope you enjoyed that little walk through from the sort of what I take out in the woodlands or out in a location when I'm thinking about multiple exposure work when I'm going to be back on the computer. Look forward to seeing you soon.